So I'm very happy to be chatting with Benjamin Howard, the writer, director, and editor of Riley, which is his first feature film that will be uh, making its world premiere at SIF. I will read a little bit of this write-up. It says, ambitious high school athlete Dakota Riley begins his senior year like most of his peers within the confines of the steady monotony that comes with adolescence, sports, classrooms, dinner tables, and school halls. With high expectations for his athletic pursuits, Dakota lives within carefully designed boundaries, a calculated blueprint upon which he's formed the basis of his identity. But when the reality of that identity is thrown into disarray, Dakota is forced to confront the consequences of denying himself or coming to terms with who he really is. So thank you, thank you for, for coming to chat with me. Thank you for uh, yeah taking the time. I'm I'm honored. I'm I'm excited. I mean, you've been behind the camera for a while now. You 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 studied film um, in in college. You've made a number of music videos, commercials, some some short films. Um, one of which we'll definitely touch on uh, today. But how does it feel to have that first feature film coming out? Um, a dream come true is is one way to put it yeah. and to put it shortly it's really a dream come true I yeah you're right I did undergrad at San Diego State I got my master's degree at UCLA and even while I was at UCLA the idea of of doing a feature at some point it just didn't seem it didn't seem attainable or feasible but you know one thing leads to the other and and you find people who love the art and just want to help out. And we're able to kind of make this and pull this together, this passion project, working with the community. And uh, we're just really so excited to have this out into the world finally. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And we're happy to have the, the world premiere up in up in Canada and Calgary. And we're we're excited to have you join us too. Yeah, being on an international stage, I, I wouldn't ask for it any other way. It's it's great. Yeah. Awesome. So as I alluded to in my little intro there, you wrote this film, you directed this film, and you also edited this film. Was that a result of kind of like the indie filmmaking process? Or do you like being involved in all of those um, different roles? How did that kind of come to be? I mean, I think it started with like the, the old adage that to write what you know, and and so when it was time to kind of, you know, decide if I'm really going to do this and I, I want to make something, you know, pragmatic and 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 and, and uh, approachable and feasible, I wanted to keep it within a certain scope. And, well, this personal story just kind of made sense to put, you know, on onto paper. Um, um, so writing what you know is kind of where where things started. But in, in terms of the editing uh, specifically. Yeah, it was it was partially like, well, I don't have a whole lot of money to yeah. bring an editor on board, but it was also I, I love editing. I really like editing. I've I've been a freelance editor for you know years, and um, I think I'm a quick editor. So there's there were elements where I'm like, I can do this. I've got this timeline that I'm working with. I can fit within that timeline, but, and I also enjoyed the process. And I could be totally wrong by saying this, but I feel like I'm. An objective editor, even with my own work, I I know like oh, that that take didn't work. I'm gonna drop that, or like oh, the sweet sequence isn't totally playing. Like it's not landing the way I want it to. So maybe that needs to go. I was able to kind of do that with obviously a ton amount you know of, of help from from folks giving me notes and feedback. Um, but it was it was partially it was two sided. Yes, I can't really afford an editor, but I also really enjoy editing. So let me try and cut yeah. this myself. No, that's that's fair, and um, I mean it's quite obvious after watching that your your skill not just as a writer and director but also the the editing um shines through there so that's that's always nice that it that it works out that way thank you i appreciate yeah. that a lot thank you obviously we are going to talk a lot about um riley that's why we're here but before we dive into that i i came across something that 
um, mentioned that one of the first films that you made was asking uh, a date to prom. Is that is that true? Was that part of your like early filmmaking experience? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. That's my true debut, actually. Yeah, That's my actual yeah, debut. Yeah. Uh, my senior year of high school, yes, prom season was coming around. My buddy and I were kind of thinking of, you know, cool promposals were a big yeah, thing. We, yeah. and, and they probably, I'm sure they still are. And we were trying to decide oh, what, what could be a really cool way to ask our dates to prom. And, and it, it was I was it was early on in my interest in, in storytelling through film and filmmaking and, and the process of how that all gets done and so I said what if we made like a little tiny movie and he was down and so I wrote this thing and we both starred in it and and I had my brother's help he was taking film classes at a local junior college and yeah. so he was there like acting as our cinematographer <laughs> and I was directing for the first time I didn't really even know what that was but I was doing it and um and so it, yeah we pieced together this like seven minute short film uh, of two guys trying to figure out a way to ask their dates to prom. And uh, at the very end of the short, they kind of approach the the classrooms where they, these girls are supposed to be in class. And then mm -hmm. on the actual day, we asked the teacher like, hey, can we show this movie in class? And he said, yeah, I'm totally down. So we showed the movie in class. At the end of the movie, the guys in the movie walk up to the doors and then the movie ends. And then my buddy and I actually walked in. No way. And had signs or whatever, and 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 asked them right then and there. Um, so that was kind of my my early uh, dive into storytelling and film, and I I absolutely fell in love with it. And I haven't looked back since. Yeah, that I'm I'm so happy to hear that story. That is that's amazing, and I would never have the courage to put myself out there like that in front of a, an entire class in, in high school. So I have a lot of respect for that. It was, it was too much fun, but it was also like a logistical thing too. I had to ask my date like a month prior. I said, Hey, Maddie is her name. She's lovely. We're still good friends. I was like, Maddie, you, you don't have a date, right? Like you, I've heard you want to go with me. I'd love to go with you. I'm going to ask you, but you don't know when it's going to happen and you don't know how, but just like, we're good. Right. And she's like, absolutely. Yes. Thanks. Let's do it. Uh, so I had to like kind of plan and produce a little bit. It was my first experience producing. It was, it was great. Yeah. No, oh, that's, that's such a good story. Um, and fast forward, what, a, a decade or so. And uh, you have your, your first feature film coming out and you've been quite open about this being a deeply personal film, right? It, it stars uh, Dakota Riley is the, is the character um, played by Jake Hawley. Um, so you base this off of your own experiences being a football player in high school, coming to terms with your own sexuality. How, how similar in the end was uh, Riley's experience compared to your experience at that time it's it it's it's somewhat similar um in in a lot of ways and then not so similar in other ways i, I took some creative liberties in in you know maybe even living vicariously through to yeah. he, he, he's kind of more of a womanizer in the movie than even yeah. i probably was back then um but, but there were certain elements of like, yeah, you know, you talk with your buddies, your football teammates, and you guys are like, you know, having these fun, raunchy, ridiculous, stupid conversations about girls. And I'm trying to fit in. And like, I totally remember those moments in high school. And, and so, yeah, I wanted to pull from that experience and kind of that truth and, and, and put that kind of on screen. Um, so some of those things were, yeah, kind of, Kind of pulled from real life and then other things uh not so much mm -hmm. yeah i think what stands out to me is how raw and real it does come across as uh there's no moment that at least to me felt manufactured right and there were moments that i, I think intentionally are, are meant to make the viewer uncomfortable because this is an uncomfortable experience and you don't shy away from that which I 
which I loved. I, I was just hoping you would be able to talk a little bit about those decisions to to keep this raw and and real, essentially. I, I mean, it kind of goes back to you know w wanting to tell the truth. Yes, those were those were those uncomfortable instances were probably certain you know uh, aspects of of what I actually experienced you know. 10, 11, 12 years ago. Um, and so I wanted to kind of, and the other thing is I think a lot of, of uh, gay and queer, queer men, um, in fact, I, I know this to be true, like, uh, friends that have seen the film and friends of friends who, who've caught the film have said like, uh, gay, gay men specifically have said, I resonated with that so much like oh my gosh that was me in high school like oh you were doing that too oh we were all like it, it's just kind of like this universal thing straight and gay i've had gay yeah. or i've had a you know straight you know friends kind of say like oh yeah that's kind of that was happening huh and and maybe we're allowed to talk about it maybe it's not so weird that that happened or maybe that's totally normal like all these people are kind of you know doing this and and um but to the point of kind of yeah, the uncomfortability element. I mean, it was, that's what it was back then. Just so terribly awkward and uncomfortable, but also so exciting um, to kind of be discovering these things about yourself in real time with your close friends. And um, so I wanted to kind of take that and, and, and you know, not, not be a provocateur in, in doing so, but just kind of tell the truth, like, hey, this is just how high school goes sometimes for some people. It came across that way to me, definitely. And there's um, so many examples, not to disparage other um, films and other filmmakers, but there's so many examples of coming of age stories um, involving a whole host of characters that seem to hide from that reality. And and I love the fact that this film, it's it's not hiding, right? It is it is showing you exactly what it needs and wants to show you i i totally appreciate that i mm -hmm. think that was kind of our goal you know we uh i i you know love simon i love the movie love simon but the way i would kind of pitch this to people before we made the film was like hey this is like this isn't love simon it's going to be a little bit more mm -hmm. awkward than that a little bit more down and dirty um mm -hmm. it's kind of the uncut the unrated version of love simon maybe um but yeah, I just it, it just really just goes back to like what happened back then. That's what I want to tell. I want to tell that truth. That's that's what happened to me. I think that's what happened to a lot of people. Let's try to tell that. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm so excited for this film to be given that that platform. Right. It's it's a story uh, that that needs to be heard and needs to be shared. So I'm. I'm very excited that it's it's getting that opportunity and hopefully it will continue to um, show around around the world, right? That's that's the goal. We hope so. Our, our U.S. premiere follows up about a month after uh, Calgary. We're playing in Bend, Oregon. You had uh, a short film kind of a proof of concept, I guess you could say, um, with Rendezvous. Um, and that also starred Jay Colley, right, who... Um, continued this this role of, of Dakota Riley and my understanding is that Rendezvous kind of centered around that um, experience that Dakota Riley had with the older man um, kind of examining uh, consent and some other things along those lines how what was the kind of growth from Rendezvous into this feature were they being built side by side did you always know that you would carry those elements from rendezvous into this film kind of what was that process like? it was it was you know the first thing i might say is rendezvous was basically made as a standalone we we made that short just thinking this is going to be it that's it and it, you know went through that process for a shoot i cast jake jake's great we got jb waterman the older guy in that movie and then he was wonderful and make the film and that was basically it. And then when it kind of came time to decide like, okay, yes, this, this, this feature, I'm going to try and get off the ground again, writing what, you know, well, I've made rendezvous and I, I liked being in that world and exploring that, that, that 
element and so maybe we kind of stay in that and we see like does this character of dakota does he have more to say are there more things that we can kind of explore with him and so as as we i guess wrote yeah the feature version it was always kind of like this is basically just rendezvous but you know four times as long um <laughs> And that's kind of how we approach the feature. Like we, we the, the rendezvous turned into a proof of concept. Eventually we realized, oh yeah, this is just gonna be like, that was our proof of concept. And now we're just gonna make kind of the longer version of it. Um, and that was that was kind of the nuts and bolts version of, of how the feature came to be. The uh, two leads from, from rendezvous, I believe both carried into um, the feature, is that, is that right? They yeah. did, yeah. Yeah, Jake and JB are, stellar just incredible actors incredible artists um to work with but also a lot of fun to work with like yeah. getting on set with them every day was just like a playground of just like let's try this let's do this what do you think of this it was incredible they're hmm. they're they're the best yeah no they were they were um both obviously very strong performances in in riley the the other performance that that really stood out to me and I, I mean I don't know if this performance has resonated with with other folks that you've talked to as well but um Connor Story's uh performance right it, it, yeah. I I was just I thought he was unbelievable his performance just really really stood out to me I don't know if you could um talk about how he came on the film and what what that was like well Connor is a, a scene stealer, is what people tell me when they, in early, early cuts yeah. of, of Connor's scenes. This, who is this guy? This guy's a scene stealer. Don't touch anything. It's perfect. Like, that's what I was told. Like, yeah. everything with Connor was great. Uh, he is so awesome to work with, too. We, he was kind of a late addition, actually. We, um, we had a casting call go out. We had um, uh, several you know a handful of actors kind of come in and the, the the role called for something specific and I wasn't totally sure if I was like getting that from 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 the the guys that were coming in and and Connor was one of them and he read and he was excellent and I'm like I kind of want to go with him but the role's kind of calling for something else and 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 I you know it was a kind of a back and forth with my casting director I was ready to pull the trigger on an actor but wasn't totally like convinced to myself that I was going to show up on set when it came time to shoot this. And I wasn't sure if, if that, there was a gut feeling I had, I wasn't sure if we're going the right direction here. So um, I had kind of a back, a, a phone call with, with Paul Reddy, our, our casting director. I, I was 60 seconds away from sending him the email saying like, okay, lock this guy in. But I yeah. call Paul. I'm like, Paul, I'm having second thoughts here. I'm, can you talk me off this ledge? What do we think we need to do? What do you suggest? And and Paul said like, go with whoever had who had the best audition, regardless of what the role is calling for, mm -hmm. regardless of what you think it needs to be or what we want it to be or whatever it is. Who had the best audition? Who had the best performance? I said, well, that was Connor. Connor had the best role, the the best audition. He said, then Connor's the guy. And and so um, so then yeah, it was it was a it was a quick you know kind of pivot into. Uh, getting connor locked in the the role originally was going to be in this this spanish class instead of a french class mm -hmm. so the 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 character was going to have be fluent in spanish and and so i was like well i need kind of need someone who speaks this foreign language connor happens to speak french fluently so so it was a really easy yeah. like oh my gosh this is yeah. perfect it was like very serendipitous that we ended up locking him in and uh everyone loves you know what he delivers on screen yeah. and i along with all the other actors i want to work with all of, of course. them a lot more but connor especially i would i would love to keep working with him yeah i think uh as you kind of characterized it um at the beginning there he was a scene stealer right he every scene he was in right he he knows how to captivate an audience that's for sure yeah he was excellent yeah i know this is something that you've talked about before but it's been kind of uh a, a hot topic in in the media over the last several years obviously there's uh, a lot of sex scenes both um 
explicit or implicit in the in this film and uh you used an intimacy coordinator um, i believe on, on riley I, I was wondering if you could talk about about how it is to film those intimate scenes and kind of the role that that these intimacy coordinators can play yeah um adrian was her name she's incredible we we had an intimacy coordinator for rendezvous hmm. so we we used an ic that was like 2020 it was when we shot rendezvous so so that that person kind of came in and and showed us like oh wh what the role of an intimacy coordinator involves and it involves some just a lot of discussing and prep and talking about okay here's exactly what the the script calls for and all these conversations happen you know, individually, I, I'm never really part of those discussions, those early discussions where an intimacy coordinator is going to come in and, and speak to an actor. It's always the IC and the actor, and that's it. So the IC kind of explains, like, this is what the director's going for. This is what the script's calling for. This is how much we're going to see. This is what we're asking of you. This is how much tongue we need you to use or whatever it is. They have those nitty gritty awkward conversations just so that everyone's on the same page mm -hmm. so kind of they, they're saving me I don't I so that I don't necessarily have to have those conversations um and then and then they come in and they do a few days of rehearsal but it's not it's not performance it's it's basically choreographing it's choreographing this dance that happens on the bed and and they work you know the IC works with me on how does this play for you is this kind of what we're going for yeah that's great i'm wondering maybe can the leg come around this way okay great let's work that in and it's literally a step by step routine mm -hmm. a dance that you basically you memorize this choreography the actors do and and then you execute on set and what what that prep time does it lets you get on set and not have to like figure it out you've already done the prep work the ic is there yeah. on set we're like okay so remember we talked about oh yeah let's do that okay great so all it's like a truncated process of knowing like the the logistics of it it, it almost takes some of the intimacy out but in a weird way that's like helpful because yeah. we've already had these conversations we already know what we need to do we already know how the camera is going to be shooting this shot and what the camera needs um so being on set it's kind of just about executing the the game plan um and then continuing to have conversations like hey mm -hmm. we talked about this we still good with that yeah okay great or if there's like you know what i'm not totally sure if i'm feeling that okay great excellent let's talk about what else we can do you know what i mean um so adrian was great you know just working with her and jake and jv and and the cool thing was that they had done this in rendezvous so and a lot yeah. of the crew, um, our cinematographer, Michael, who he came back in and he's my go-to guys, uh, you know, so he, he and I kind of had this shorthand. We've already filmed this scene, basically. Let's just do it again, but a little bit different. Um, so it was kind of, it was a simple, it was a sim simple process, I guess. It's very, it can be very tricky, but ultimately yeah. it was made simple because of Adrian. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I, I love that. Um, the way that you phrased it, right? It's just like choreographing a dance, essentially, right? These these intimate intimate scenes. Something else that uh, was present throughout the film, sometimes overtly, sometimes explicitly, but sometimes more subtly, were these religious overtones when um, Riley was in bed, um, and then we have this the Lord's Prayer or a version of the Lord's Prayer um, play over. And there's a, a couple scenes of like grace before dinner. Was, was this religious connection like a conscious decision? And what um, what was kind of the, the intention behind that? The intention behind it was, was quite frankly, just pulling from my real life. Mm -hmm. Before every football game, the team we you know we'd huddle up and we'd say the Lord's Prayer. I think we said it at halftime too every game. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I I wanted to take that. I I love that tradition that we did. It was it was it was camaraderie. It was the, you know the guys all huddled up in their football pads and their helmets saying the Lord's Prayer, going out you know playing a game. I wanted to just kind of try to emulate that from from what I liked so much about it back then. Um, 
and then the the grace yeah we would say grace at you know over dinner at lunch um breakfast growing up we did that i still pray to myself so Mm -hmm. um uh so that was kind of pulling from real life as well and and what i one thing i didn't really want to do was i didn't want to cast religion or christianity in any sort of negative light Mm -hmm. or or even a positive light i just wanted to kind of say like this is this is it i don't know i wanted to be Mm -hmm. somewhat neutral with it Mm -hmm. yeah and and i i think it it came across that way right it it may have added in in some level to these battles that that dakota riley was was facing but yeah like like every other scene it was never presented with this is my thesis right uh on religion this is my thesis on um sexuality this is my thesis on x y and and z right each scene was presented to to the audience which which i love right it's it's real i I love that real is what i just that's what Mm -hmm. i wanted to do i just Mm -hmm. just wanted to make it real i wanted to tell something truthful and i mean i can say yeah growing up religious it certainly played some sort of role on on my coming out and my identity crisis back then and trying to figure out like oh this is who i am is that okay i don't i'm not sure i'm kind of being told it's not but maybe i don't feel like it's bad you know what i mean i just wanted to kind of take that and and not really really run with it but just kind of drop it in in the way that it would kind of played in my own life so obviously there are some emotional scenes throughout the film the the one for whatever reason that that really hit me on an emotional level was that last conversation between Dakota and Skylar. Um, and he says something along the lines of, I, I'm not ready to say who I am. Um, and then he says, but I'm not straight. And it was, I don't know what it was about that conversation that just resonated with me so deeply. You see this character who's so close and he's, he's, he's almost there. And it, it's just beautiful, I guess, like seeing that step, even though it's not 100% of the, of the way there. I don't know if you could talk about that scene in particular or um, what kind of, have led you to that that conversation I, I think what my intention was showing kind of a side of this the side of coming out that it's it's sometimes it's the hardest part is just coming out to yourself and I think that's what I was intending to do there because I I I know what I didn't want to do. I didn't want, you know, the pride parade sequence at the end of the movie where he's living his best life. Yeah. That, that's like, the, that's a few movies down. Yeah. I wanted to explore the, <laughs> I wanted to explore the, the, the really personal, like this took me a good amount of time and pondering and, 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 you know, thinking to, to, to come to terms with and, and it didn't happen, you know, overnight. It happened. It happened over several years, um, and so that's that's kind of what I wanted to do. By by the end of the movie, I, I wasn't, you know, sure if, if is he going to come out? Is he not? I, maybe we don't need him to do either. Maybe he's not even sure yet, but he knows he knows something is is uh, different, and and he also knows he he wants to just live a life. Um, so I, I wanted it to be somewhat kind of like left up to interpretation um, by the end, but I was certainly yeah trying to kind of explore this, like, Oh, it's the hardest part. Sometimes it's just coming out to yourself. Yeah. Um, and again, it, I think every, everything we've talked about just comes back to that. It's raw and it's real, right? It's not ending with that, that parade and that celebration and everything's perfect and right it's this is the reality and it's and it's tough it's not it's not easy speaking of it not being 
easy. Have you always been so confident in yourself to be able to, to put a project like this forward for the world to see? I mean, this is, this is raw, this is intimate. I imagine that this requires a great deal of vulnerability pulling from your own life experiences. Is this something that you wanted to do for a while or has it taken some work? I mean, there, yeah, there's certain, there's absolutely kind of an element of vulnerability um, here, but I, like we, we had a little friends and family screening some time ago. And before that, I, I was just like sick to my stomach. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. And I've never felt that way. I've done short mm -hmm. films. I've done the festival route on, you know, for short films. And I'm always excited to like show the work and go talk about it. But this was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't eat right now. Like this is like a, this is a different feeling. It's how I feel, used to feel before track meets in high school. I'd yeah. be like, oh, I don't feel like running the 200 meter dash right now. I just would rather do anything else but this. Um, so I think, I think that lends itself. Yeah. It's because this, this, the, the story is so personal and it is scary kind of kind of telling that and, and, and putting it on screen. And, and I think, I think in a, in a weird way, there's, an element of narcissism too, I'm sure. I, I I think that all artists have to have to be narcissists. Otherwise, oh, yeah. why would they think that they're you know worthy of of writing their story or painting their painting mm -hmm. or taking their or whatever they want to do? Uh, there's an element of narcissism in it. Um, but you know, of course, I'm not making this movie because because of my narcissistic tendencies. I want to tell a story that I think is important, and 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 I want to tell something truthful for for kids, you know, that are currently kind of going through what I was going through. And I want them to kind of know like, Hey, a lot of other people are going through this too. And it's going to be okay. Um, that's kind of what it comes down to for me. It's, it's not really about like, Oh, I wanted to tell, you know, this, this story of mine. It's more so about like, this is, I think this is a, an important thing for, for kids that are maybe struggling with their identity to, to, to see and to realize like, oh, I'm not alone. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't couldn't agree more. And I'm so happy that that you did make this this film and were able to push push beyond those those vulnerabilities. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit here because I came across something that um, I found uh, quite interesting and I was hoping that you could expand on a little bit. So um, through my life, I've been involved in the kind of uh, community disability services world. I, I saw that you also worked um, in, in that field and was able to bring the film side in. I think it was called Options for All and Film and Media Studios. I, I was just, I would love to hear a little bit more about, about that, if, if that's okay. Yeah, totally. We, we I, I graduated from San Diego State and right out of college I got this job teaching young adults with developmental disabilities filmmaking techniques and I was just so stoked I, I like I love teaching I love being you know geeky and passionate about these things and so finding that job that's within my industry within this passion for teaching and then working with this demographic it just felt like serendipitous to to you know kind of have that opportunity and I loved every second of it um, I had to leave there because then I got into UCLA and, and then um, so when it came time to make this we knew that we wanted to shoot in San Diego and so I still had connects uh, there at that old job and I, I hit up you know kind of my co-workers and, and I said hey what what would the collaboration here look like what what do we have to do to kind of make that work and um, so I was able to kind of work with options for all on getting uh, a few, a few of some of my former actually, I guess they were all my former students, um, on set. And, and we had Joseph who was doing, uh, uh, kind of an art PA assistant in the art department. Brandon was Brandon and blaze were a couple of our, um, on set production assistants helping out. Um, and then, and then a good handful of them came in, uh, as background extras, um, as oh, well. Really? So, 
Yeah, we had in the classroom um, sequences, and then some of the, hmm. the the big game sequences they're in the in the bleachers. Um, so you know, being able to work with and collaborate with those you know students of, of mine was really really special for me, and I I think special for them. I think they really kind of enjoyed the opportunity to be on kind of the the scale of the shoot was a little bit bigger than what we used to do you know we didn't have a whole lot of money so we when i was working there we'd be kind of putting these small little pieces you know projects together but this was like oh this is a little bit more involved this is kind of a little cool little indie movie shoot um so having them work on that with with us was really really special i i love it that's such a such a cool story and amazing to be able to bring bring those worlds together yeah i was just wondering if you have any takeaways that that you um, would like to share with with viewers or any just kind of overall message that you'd like to to send out? I don't know. I, I guess I would just say go into the movie with an open mind and and um, and for I guess I I think for the the younger viewers who might be kind of struggling with who they are that things are going to be okay and you're, you're not alone yeah and and i just hope i hope that this this film reaches the the audience that that it deserves i think that the this portrayal specifically can be extremely life affirming for a lot of people. I, I i really appreciate that and um, that's definitely, that is definitely our hope. We want to tell people like, oh yeah, I'm, I, I am really not alone. There are other people going through the same exact thing. So I totally appreciate that. All right. I love it. Um, Riley is Benjamin Howard's, uh, feature film debut, and it is having its world premiere Sunday, September 24th at 6 30 PM as part of the Calgary International Film Festival. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.